All right, so y'all might have recognized this uh, spot from episode three when we did our art cash poisoning. And Harrison here is uh, getting ready to show us another sweet security loophole. But joining us is another just absolutely beautifully talented uh, hacker, Isabel. Her name is Isabel. Say hello, Isabel. So we decided to do something a little bit different today. Yeah, this time around, instead of having a specific hack in mind, we went out in the field to find out what was available to us. Unfortunately, this network is not on the William & Mary network, so it's not going to be a lot of fun. Um, so let's head down and find a wireless network that is on the William & Mary network. Founded in 1693 by the Reverend James Blair, the College of William & Mary is the second oldest institution of higher learning in the United States, second to Harvard. She's going to show us where the wireless networks are. You know, I sort of feel bad about owning William & Mary kids because <laughs> they don't really know any better. So Isabel has taken us all the way to the College of William & Mary bookstore. In 1862, during the American Civil War, drunken soldiers of the 5th Pennsylvania Cavalry set fire to the Wren Building, reportedly in an attempt to prevent Confederate snipers from using it for cover. I believe they have a Wi-Fi uh, access point here, and not only that, but it's tied into the William & Mary wireless network. Wes, weapons of max destruction, please. All right, sir. So the first step in any successful attack is to run a little bit of enumeration on the network. That way you can gather some information about your target. So we decided to run a few in-map scans so we could figure out what systems were vulnerable. Normally you need a key because you can jump on the wireless network but they have a device that, or a piece of software that uh, authenticates you from a website. Now, um, we just happen to have a username and password, which... <laughs> uh, yeah, some things are better left unsaid. But if you're student number 1763, thank you. So we're going to first uh, find out our subnet and then run a few in-map scans. So the first scan we ran was a ping scan. Now that will show us what computers and how many computers are on the network. I have a hard time imagining that all of these computers are wireless users because everybody's on break. So all the students are gone, there's nobody to use wireless network. I have a feeling uh, what it looks like is they're using something like the SonicWall Soho 3 TZW, which is integrated wireless into the firewall, so the subnet for the wireless can be set up to be the same as the subnet for the wired computer. So what we see on our wireless network connection is the same is thing, the wired, the wired network. The next scan we ran was a version scan, which revealed the application name and version of every software and service that's running on a particular computer. Now we did this several times until we found a vulnerable computer. Now this is interesting. I'm seeing, <laughs> this is actually really interesting. What do you got? Uh, I don't know why, why in the world somebody's got an Apache box up, but it looks like uh, there's an old Apache server running. Okay, so the particular version of Apache that was running on this computer was 1.3.17, which is very old and also susceptible to numerous attacks. Why don't we jump on the web and I'm gonna run a security focus real quick and see if we can come up with uh, some sort of exploit for this version of Apache. Security Focus is a great website that's not only host to the bug track mailing list, but also has an up-to-date list of exploits. Now, some of the other good sites that you can check out are Exploit Tree and Packet Storm. According to Security Focus, <laughs> Darren, you're gonna kill me. <laughs> it looks like uh, this is built into Metasploit now. So, <laughs> I can see his face already. He doesn't want me using Metasploit. All right, you take over. That way he can't hurt, he can't like yell at me. Oh, so I get yelled yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So you're going to use Metasploit because it's already on that computer. Um, the IP address is... Okay, so starting off with Metasploit, we have to decide which exploit we're going to use. And we decided to go with the Apache Chunked Win32. Yep. Now the next step is to set the remote host. Now, the remote host is obviously the target computer that we will be exploiting. And from there, we decided to do a show of all the available payloads for our particular exploit, and we set it to the Win32 bind payload. Right, now we have to set the target. Um, that's which operating system and version of Apache we're going to be exploiting. We set the target to zero, which is the window ge Windows generic bo brute, uh, force. brute force. Right, and we w went ahead and executed the exploit, but this particular payload was a no-go. It did not work. Yep. So what we did was unset the payload and then reset it to the Win32 reverse shell. Now, just as a quick reminder, if you're using the reverse shell, you have to make sure to set your local host, your L host, which is your computer, so that shell gets reflected back to you. From there, we executed the exploit, and bingo, 
We have a C prompt in Darwin. Yep, piece of cake. There we are. Okay. All right. So Metasploit has come in handy and proved itself useful once again. <laughs> Script beauty. <laughs> Darren's like freaking out right now. Because <laughs> uh, we used it last month. But anyhow, uh, we've got root directory on this computer. So obviously the moral of this story is not go exploit Apache, but uh, rather make sure that you know who else is on your network. For example, number one, don't ever, ever, ever use a school network. Ever. Number two, um, make sure that when you do join a network, you, you know who else is on the network, so you want to scan it within MAP, just like we did, and find out who is vulnerable. Because the vulnerabilities on a network affect you directly. If we were mean, which we're not, we could have chosen to take advantage of that server. We could have set it up as a host for all types of other attacks. For example, we could have made a whole phishing site out of it and done DNS poisoning to spearfish certain users on that network. The other things we could have done uh, are endless. But make sure that you know who else is on your network and what services are running. That way you can choose to not be on that network if you know it's vulnerable.